artists and welcome to another art activity um, and this one is going to be inspired by the children's book the great wave which is actually another inspiration by the great wave by hokusai in a previous youtube video i read aloud this book i definitely recommend that you watch that read aloud as well it's an excellent story Today we're going to talk about our element of art line as we start to draw out our great wave and we're going to kind of give our great wave a new and abstract kind of take as well. So first I'm just going to take a look at this picture and let's notice some of the lines that are in this picture. I see curved lines that show the waves trough in the curve of the wave itself or in its barrel. I see some curly lines that are up here showing like as the rough white water. I see some straight broken lines that are on the boats where the men are hiding and ducking down. And then I see a lot of these lines direction is diagonal. So this is really showing a lot of movement in this picture. I can see that the water is really rough. We would know that the artwork you know artists try to show us action through their use of lines and diagonal lines are the best way to show that action so keeping my picture close to me as i start to draw today i'm just going to be using my pencil uh, i'm going to throw in some other lines with sharpies i have a thicker and a, um, a fine point sharpie and an ultra fine chip sharpie as well but you can use whatever it is that you have at home if you want to put your own spin on this and add color, you can use markers, color pencils, crayons, paint, whatever you might want to add. Make it your own. So what I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to set my scene with my foreground and creating my wave. So I'm going to start with a line that comes across my paper and curls up and around to make that barrel of that wave. And I like to kind of thicken up my barrel a little bit by adding another curved line here in the middle. Then I'm gonna add that middle ground. I'm gonna make it kind of wavy. I don't want it to be exactly straight because again, it's that rough water that we wanna see. Then let's go ahead and add in our volcano, our Mount Fuji, because that's important as part of the 36 views of Mount Fuji that Hokusai was trying to show. So this is my basic wave for my great wave. Now I'm going to use my Sharpie and trace over these lines and I like to start with a pencil first because if I make an oops then I can erase it and you know not everyone is confident right off the gate. Oop I didn't quite go over my line as well as I would have liked there but that's okay. You know what I can do? I can go back with my eraser and I can clean that up later. All right now what we're going to do to our great wave picture is we're going to zen tangle this. And if you don't know what a zen tangle is, it is a really fun process where we add patterns within our picture. So I'm going to be doing this on the wave part portion or the ocean portion. Now I'm just going to use some different types of line. I'm going to divide up my space. Bigger spaces, not too big, but not too small. So a nice medium sized space. Maybe I want a nice zigzag over here. Maybe this one's gonna be a curvy one, like my wave. Let's kind of echo that this way. I'm gonna try to show a little bit of direction with my line as it kind of climbs up my wave. They can be straight also, that's fine. But again, thinking how you can maybe make this more diagonal and show more movement in your picture. All right, so now I've divided up my space for my ocean in my wave, now it's time to start zentangling. So a zentangle is like a doodle where you are gonna fill each of the space up with some different patterns. Maybe your patterns is gonna be line. Yeah, you know, that looks okay, but a zentangle really is successful when it fills the space completely and fully. So I'm gonna go trace back over this again and I'm gonna do a little bit more in between and go all the way to the edge. Isn't that better? I definitely think that is better. Okay, it doesn't have to just be lines. You could also use shapes. 
So maybe this one, I'm going to create circles and I'm gonna kind of start to follow around the pattern. Oh, my dog isn't, I guess he is bored with my lesson because he's walking around. That's okay. He just can't have all the same fun that we can, drawing and making art. All right, now let's see, what else could I do in here? Maybe this one, I'm gonna do a zigzag. And maybe my zigzag is gonna start to make diamonds actually. So as I start to fill in, you know, I noticed like this was kind of plain. So let's repeat. Repetition is a great principle of design that helps our artwork really grow and become its best. Look at that. Oh. Oh, see how much better that looks when I kind of filled it in completely? Okay, I'm gonna continue working on this. I'm gonna switch it over to my, or I speed it up and you can see me as I finish it. Here's my completed Zentangle Great Wave. If you wanted to add an element of color to this, you could get out your colored pencils, maybe some different values, like a light blue and a dark blue, and give it a little dimension like that. You could even use markers or crayons to do this with, or maybe even a watercolor wash over the top. It doesn't matter. Zentangles are great and beautiful black and white, just as they are. And this is a great lesson to do, even if you don't have that many tools at home. You All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil truly to draw this out. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to create with you again.